and this is what he calls the glissando head joint. And the glissando head joint has a very sophisticated sliding mechanism inside the head joint that allows the lip plate to, to move and extend the tube. So when it's all the way closed, it plays like a regular flute. So far in my life, it's been a great toy. I've had a really fun time playing with it. I've used it in a couple pieces where composers didn't expect this, but they wrote glissandi that were pretty difficult or impossible to do on my regular flute, especially long, slow ones like. Well, you really couldn't do that on a flute that didn't have one of these. With this, as you can see, you can do it pretty, pretty nicely. Um, I'm just beginning to explore some of the possibilities of this. The, yeah. There are some people, if you, if you went on YouTube and looked up Glissando Head Joint, you'll find a few performers that have, including Robert, who've done some very cool stuff with this, and I hope to join them one of these days. Can you try that with a multiphonic? Yeah, good idea. Let's see what happens. I don't know whether it works or not. That multiphonic slides pretty nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure how. Let's see. I think it, it's good for multiphonics. It'd also be cool for singing and playing. It is. Maybe. And I'm not going to embarrass myself by <laughs> uh, having done it before, but okay. some, of the, some of the demonstrations I've heard with this have incorporated singing in a, in a way that, that works really well. So. Uh, this is the latest thing, and um, Robert loaned me this one in order that I could get it out into the world and get composers writing music for it and me performing on it. So uh, I don't know what to tell you, but this is uh, something that I'm, I'm hoping to, to use more in the future. And, oh, let's, I can tell you what the range of this is. As you might imagine, if you think about it, it depends on what note you're playing, because this this telescopes a finite amount and when we're playing a low note on the flute we're talking about a two and a half foot long tube and when we play a high note on the flute we're talking about a, a one foot long tube so the amount the percentage of that length that telescopes changes so when I'm playing the very lowest note in the flute it's a little bit over a, a whole tone a whole tone and a little bit when I play the shortest tube note on the flute, the C sharp, it's a little bit more than a major third. So that's what's available with this, with this particular thing. Um, so that's, I think that's what I, what I have for you today. Any, any other, any specific or general questions?